Hey everyone, so today we're going to be continuing our exploration of extinct but important rums in the tiki world. Last week we took a look at the Loud's London Dock Jamaican rum, which was the Jamaican rum used in the original 1934 zombie. Today we're going to be taking a look at another important rum. Today we're going to be making the Appleton Punch rum, so let's do this. Now some of the most iconic rums in the tiki canon are the Ray and Nephew Dagger rums. There was a one dagger, which was a five-year-old rum, a two dagger, which was a six-year-old rum, and a three dagger, which had been aged for 10 years. They also had a dagger punch, which was an eight-year-old rum. Now, why were these dagger rums so important? Well, these are the original Jamaican rums that people like Don and Mario and Steve Crane would mix with. So these are what the original recipes were actually built off of. So why aren't we still using these rums today? Well, it's actually pretty simple. They were discontinued in 1952. However, it does seem that the Appleton Punch took its place. Now, from articles I found online, the information that I could find about the Appleton Punch Rum was that it was distilled at 97 proof, and it began its run in the 1960s up until, actually, I'm really not sure because that was about as much information as I could find. If you happen to know more about this specific rum, definitely drop it in the comments below because I'd love to learn more. But the good news is, is that Joe Garcia, a member of the Facebook group Tiki Recipes, has gone through the painstaking exploration of coming up with a blend that he says replicates the exact flavor of the Appleton Punch rum. So at least we still get to try it. Now this idea came to Joe as he was listening to an interview with Jim Hayward. Jim Hayward was talking about replicating the flavor of the Kohala Bay, which is actually the rum we're gonna talk about next week. And in that interview, Jim goes on to say that maybe we should actually be trying to replicate the Appleton Punch because that was actually closer to the Ray and Nephew Dagger that was originally used. So Joe set to the task. Joe remembered that his mom used to collect mini bottles of alcohol. So he went over to his mom's house. Rubbaging through the bottles, he found a few of the Appleton Punch. With that as his control group and using other rums that are now produced by Ray and Nephew, he set out to the task of replicating the flavor. Joe found that this blend works. The blend that Joe came up with is 275 milliliters or 11 parts of Ray and Nephew Overproof, 200 milliliters or eight parts of Karuba, 150 milliliters or six parts of Blackwell's, and 125 milliliters or five parts of Appleton Signature. If you use the milliliter measurements, it combines to create a 750 milliliter bottle of Appleton Punch. So let's blend some up and give it a try. Start with five parts of Appleton Signature, which is 1.25 ounces or 37.5 milliliters. Next add six parts of Blackwell's, which is 1.5 ounces or 45 milliliters. Now add eight parts of Karuba, which is two ounces or 60 milliliters. Next, add 11 parts of Ray and Nephew, which is 2.75 ounces or 82.5 milliliters. And there you have the smallest batch of Appleton Punch that I could make. And I had to switch glassware halfway through because my Glencairn just didn't fit the volume. Anyway, let's give this a try. So I mean, right off the bat, it's definitely pretty dark. It's almost got this like red mahogany color to it, which is kind of unique. A lot of the dark Jamaicans we get are kind of like a dark straw color. This definitely has more red in it. it smells like a Jamaican rum. Yeah, I mean, this is coming in at just around 97 proof. I didn't do the math out, but I'm pretty sure Joe said it's actually a little bit over or under, but it rounds out to about 97 proof. It's pretty close. It's, I mean, for a 97 proof rum that's really not aged, it's actually pretty smooth. And it's definitely unique. We're definitely getting the ethanol burn, which makes it a little bit hard to discern the flavors at first. I didn't warm up my palate, which is my fault. But we are getting these slight funky hogo, like caramelized banana notes. We're definitely getting a lot of molasses and burnt sugar. And then on the back end, there's this unique thing that I find in pretty much every Appleton rum, and that is green apple. Let me give it one more sip. Yeah. Also, there's a bunch of like wood tannin in there as well, which I didn't expect. And then again, like I said, that green apple that I get from Appleton rums is coming in on the very back end, which is unique. It's most dark Jamaicans that I get or try don't have that flavor profile to them, but because we added the Appleton signature, it's definitely there. 
Now, as a reminder, these extinct rums weren't really meant to be sipping rums. Sure, any rum can be a sipping rum, but they were really meant to be mixers more so than anything else. But I always do like to try a spirit neat before I put it into a cocktail so that I can understand its flavor profile and how it's going to behave in that cocktail. Speaking of which, in order to showcase this wonderful blend, we're gonna be making a planter's punch. Now, there are a ton of planter punch recipes out there today. However, we're gonna use one that really makes this rum shine, or should make this rum shine, because I've honestly never made it before. Today we're gonna be making the Smuggler's Co version of the Planter's Punch. To make the Smuggler's Co version of Planter's Punch, you are gonna need a dark Jamaican rum. I'm using my Appleton Punch Clone. All Spice Dram, I'm going with the Bitter Truth Company. Rich Demerara Syrup, Lime Juice, and Aromatic Bitters. All right, let's grab a shaking tin and get mixing. In your shaking tin, add two dashes of aromatic bitters, one ounce or 30 milliliters of lime juice, three quarters of an ounce or 22.5 milliliters of rich demerara syrup, quarter of an ounce or 7.5 milliliters of allspice dram, and then three ounces or 90 milliliters of our Appleton Punch Clone. Now add 12 ounces of pebble ice to your shaking tin. Now flash blend for five seconds. Grab a chilled colander glass and open pour in. Top with more pebble ice, garnish with a mint sprig and serve with a straw. And then you have our Smuggler's Cove Planter's Punch with our Appleton Punch Clone Rum. So I guess this makes this a one, two planter's punch. Anyway. I'm sorry for the terrible joke. I'm just gonna sip this and give it a try now. So let's give it a try. Um, that may be one of the best things I've ever drank. Yep, it's really good. It is deep and rich and complex. The rum is front and center and it's being heightened by the Demerara syrup. I honestly may cut the Demerara syrup back just a little bit if I were to make this again. It's a touch on the street sweet side. But other than that, like for there being three ounces of an almost a hundred proof rum in this thing, it would go down stupid easy. This is a dangerous cocktail. A hundred, like without doubt, this is, this shouldn't be this good. Like there's a lot of booze in this cocktail and it goes down surprisingly well. So as I mentioned, there is this rich, deep molasses note that comes through that's riding this wave of spice from the allspice dram and the bitters. The lime juice is helping balance everything out. Again, there is a, it's on a touch on the sweet side. It's a two to one simple syrup two to one rich syrup. So I might dial that back just a little bit if I were to do this again, maybe like a scant three quarter or maybe even a half ounce. Honestly, I like my drinks a little bit more on the tart side, but yeah, this thing is dangerously, dangerously good. And it might be one of my new go-to cocktails. Cause I mean, honestly, it's super easy. And as long as you've got the rum made and you can batch this up in 750 milliliter bottles, super easy. Well, then this thing is simply a no brainer. Yeah. All right. That's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. As I talked about, next week we're gonna be taking a look at Jim Hayward's Kohala Bay clone, which is basically the rum that the Mai Kai built their entire legacy off of. So it's pretty important. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click that little notification bell, follow me over on Instagram and TikTok at Mixing Up Tiki. And until next time, you guys know the deal. Akole Maluna. Wow, that just like punches you in the face with flavor, right? There's this just explosion of Jamaican rum, green apple, molasses, then then rides into this wave of just sweetness. And then it just, it's a real short finish. Damn, that's good.